Hi everyone, I'm Miss Golden. Welcome to Link Crew. Thank you so much for choosing to become a Link Crew leader this year. Link Crew is all about connecting freshmen with upperclassmen so that their high school experience is more positive. So this is a video showing some of the games that we do so you're able to learn um, how to be a Link Crew leader. So thank you so much. For the leader introduction page, I would talk about your life. So for your life in school, talk about what classes you take, what activities you're in, what sports you do. And for your life outside of school, you could talk about how many animals you have, what you do for a job, what you like to do outside of school, and talk about why you wanted to be a link leader. Did you have fun at orientation? Did you want the responsibility? Did you just want to connect with the incoming freshmen? Anything like that works. Hi, my name is Hannah Wayne. This is my third year in Link Crew. At school, I like to play varsity volleyball, varsity basketball, and varsity track. I take all honors and AP courses. Outside of school, I work at Mary's. I, have, I live on a ranch, so I raise a steer for the fair, and I like doing intramural sports. For why I chose to be a Link Leader, I just really wanted the responsibility and learn how to talk to the incoming freshmen. The incoming freshmen will be faced with a lot of new challenges coming into high school. By playing our first game, Count Off, us leaders will be able to show them how to overcome challenges as a group. Here's how to play. The numbers must be set in consecutive order 1 through 20 by all different people of the group. The group cannot discuss strategy or point at people to indicate who goes next. While the numbers must be set in consecutive order, the group cannot say them in an organized pattern, such as going around the circle. Each person in the group must say at least one number, and each person can say no more than three numbers. If two people say the same number at the same time, the group starts over. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah! <laughs> now that they've met that challenge as a group, our next game will help them learn each other's names. Since you and the freshmen are going to be in a group for the whole year, it's important that they learn each other's names. By playing the game Name Tag, we will be showing them a fun way to do so. Here's how to play. Step one, have the students go around the circle and tell their names and either why they were named that or the significance of their name. If they are not sure about the significance of their name, ask the students to tell the group where they were born. Step two, have each person say their name to the group and then the group repeats the name. Step three, have the students stand up and put their name tags on the back of their legs. Step four, have the group arrange themselves alphabetically in a circle without talking to or directing each other in any way. Establish where A begins and where Z ends. After the group is finished, do a check by having the students say their names around the circle. If your group was not successful, establish a new A starting point and try again so they can be successful. Step five, standing in the circle have all the members of their group Hold their right hand out in front of them, making sure their elbow stays connected to their right side. One person stands in the middle of the circle and calls out a name of someone in the group. The leader is always the first to be in the middle. The person whose name was called must say their own name and someone else's name before the person in the middle tags that person's outreached hand. The person in the middle cannot tag the first person who they ask to say a name. And if the student moves their hand, they are in the middle. Okay, okay. Hannah, Issa. Uh, Issa, Brie. Brie, Hannah. <laughs> Brie, Hannah! <laughs> now that they have gotten to know each other's names and met a challenge together, they're going to do both at the same time with this next activity. High school is a busy time with a lot of new challenges and responsibilities. While this activity is fun, it also shows how hard it is for them to keep everything together when they have so much going on.
This game is called Team Juggling. In this game, you will have your group stand shoulder to shoulder and give them sequential numbers to each of them going around the circle and have them notice who is standing to their left and who is to their right. The leader will always be number one. Step two, ask them to move around in a circle, making sure they are not standing next to either of the people whose number is before or after theirs. Step three, have each person say their name and their number starting with you and go numerically until it gets back to you and then have them sit down. Step four, have them do this again, but this time pay attention to who comes after them in order. And then have the same person's name follow them. Do this twice. Step five, have person number one roll the ball to person number two, then two to three, and so on around the circle in New America order. Say the person's name before the ball is rolled. Do this twice around with one ball. Step six, have the group get on their knees and do the same process as step five, but this time gently toss the ball underhand. The challenge is not to have the ball drop. Now, have the group stand up and repeat step six. Step seven, add a second ball and do the same thing, starting with ball one with person one and ball two with person four. They've now learned each other's names, met some challenges as a group, and talked about what it takes to be successful in high school. Now, it's time to get to know each other a little bit better. One thing that makes high school fun is getting a lot of opportunities. And one of those opportunities to get to know people is by a game called Life Story. So here's how to play. Give each student a piece of paper and a pencil. Have students fold the paper into six sections and number each section. Have students turn outward from the circle. Then have students draw or write in the sections based on the following questions that you ask. Give them about one minute for each response. After the sixth question, go back and review what each one was so that they know what they should have drawn or written in the area. Assign each person a partner and have them share their life stories for one minute. Now that they've gotten to know each other a little bit better, they'll find out even more by asking more questions later. There are two ways to get to know people. One is by listening to their story, which they just did. The second is by asking questions, which they are going to do now by doing the question list. Here's the rules. Ask each student to choose a number between 1 and 40. This number will correspond with a question you ask from the questions right here and on the next page. What three wishes would you wish from a magic genie? Mm, my first wish would be for a million dollars. My second wish would be for a really fancy truck. And my third wish would be to have a pet squirrel. Step two, each student will answer their question. If they are really struggling, you can tell them to pick another question, but they must answer the second question. Who do you want to be like and why? What is your pet peeve and why does that bother you? My biggest pet peeve would probably be uh, people walking slow in front of me. Mm -hmm. Just because like I'm trying to get to class and like it's like slow. <laughs> yeah. Step three. You as a leader should answer a question too so that they learn about you. What do you do in your spare time? Mm, in my spare time, I spend a lot of time with my family, sometimes too much, and I'm pretty active, so I like to like just go on random walks anywhere, or like do like fun activities with my family. They've gotten to know each other and have met some challenges. Now, they're going to put it all together to meet the ultimate challenge. This next activity has to do with their success at school and in life. If they pay attention, they will be able to see the connections between the activity, the paths they take, and how that can affect their experiences. So let's have them take on this together and see what happens. Let's play 64 squares. Here's how to play. Have one student take the first step on the board. If it's a safe square, a footprint, you make no sound. And if it's an unsafe square, an X, you make a sound. If the square is safe, the student may continue on until they hit an unsafe square. If after five minutes, they are really struggling, 
you may want to give them a clue about folding or turning the paper. Once a student makes it all the way through, they lead the rest of the group through the safe path. Yay! Hopefully 64 Squares gave them some ideas on how to choose a positive path in high school. I hope you enjoyed our Link Crew training video. Thank you so much for being part of the team this year.